Uh, <clears throat> 30 years, this project, they've known that this is an issue that needs to be addressed, and we have not saved any money to do so. Um, in 30 years' time, um, one of the things I want to do with the budget is have have savings be a, be a big part of the budget because we know that there are certain things that we need in order to keep the citizens of Auburn safe, and a public safety building is one of them. For 30 years, they've known about this issue, yet we're, we're all proud of this money that we're going to get that is all state-funded, but we're not, we, we, we should have been able to take care of it ourselves by saving some of the money over the course of 30 years to be able to be self-sufficient. Um, and here we are using money that wasn't generated from the city for city purposes. But um, an, one of the other things that I find very, very strange about this entire thing is that the police department is going to get stuck in that same building that is um, falling apart. I don't understand why all the money has to go toward the fire department, why some of it can't go toward the police department, and why they should all be stuck in that same building. The police department should be stuck in that building. If that building, I read an article in The Citizen that told me that the, that the building is both falling apart and adequate to be used for the police department. It can't be both. It has to be one or the other. So it's either falling apart or it's adequate for the police department. So I, I feel as though that we should be looking to maybe split that money so that we both the police department and the fire department can get new facilities and that way we can keep our uh, citizens safe. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Mr. Miller, on the issue of the public safety building. So I know that this is something that um, I know this is something that we've been dealing with for quite some time, and I know that this uh, current city government has been aggressively, uh, something that they've aggressively sought to remedy. And uh, I think the biggest concern for everybody it was the potential location. And I think that um, the, the building on Seminary is the perfect location for this. I think this is the right, the right way to go. Um, I think having a central location for our public safety is key to making sure that everyone ha can have part of that emergency um, uh, personnel if they need it. Um, I know that the funding does not include the restoration of the current building. I would like to see us try to secure some type of funding to do that, to restore that um, as, a, as a side project, maybe down the road, because it is a historic uh, building in our town. It's very uh, prominent. People know it. They, they enjoy coming. Uh, down North Street and seeing that tower standing uh, proudly in the sunshine there at, sun at sunset. So I would like to see that as a side project, uh, maybe down the road. But I think overall, I think we're headed in the right direction with this. I think the location is perfect, and I think that uh, this is a, a, a good investment for the city. Mr. LaCastro. As I said in my opening statement, I'm 100% for a new public safety building. I feel that we've outgrown the, the old one. Yes, there is a limit. Um, we have to be careful. Just make sure we can afford it. Also, we got to get back on track. When we get a grant for ten or twelve million dollars, that's not free money. That's the taxpayers' money. Um, yeah, there's fine print that goes with it. So we got to be careful with our grants. But I'm 100% for the public safety bill. Councilor Carvajal, you have one minute. Um, if the taxpayer money from the state didn't come back to Auburn, New York, it would go to another, it would go to another uh, municipality, somewhere on Long Island, maybe in Albany. So bringing this m tax money back and aggressively getting grants is a good thing for our area. Because if we don't, don't take those grants and don't use them, then, then those grants, that money will go to other projects. I did want to address another thing with regard to, um, to our five-year financial plan. We have a five-year financial plan which is going to help us to navigate these, um, uh, the funding and we also have um, perhaps some reserve funding that may or may not be used. I want to do a shout out for our city comptroller who recently co um, completed her credentialed municipal finance officer designation. So um, that is a, a plus for our city and I'm sure she will help us to make great financial financial choices to um, to pay for the municipal the municipal um, uh, building this public safety building mr. Lucastro you'll have one minute I agree that the money would go someplace else 
But also, like I said, there is fine print and money isn't free. We'll now turn to Mr. Ward. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay. Counselor, I didn't see you. I, I want to address the comment about um, a project being 30 years in the making and us not preparing for it. I'd like to remind my opponent, I've been on city council for four years as, as Councilor Carvajal, and in those four years, we have moved this project light years ahead with um, our colleagues on council, our city manager, and our very professional and dedicated city staff. Again, we are bringing our money back into this community, and that's extremely important. The other issue that was brought up was the police department. I'd like to remind Mr. Burchard that um, Chief Butler and Deputy Chief Anthony have done a fantastic job using equitable sharing money that comes to us through our partnership with the DEA. Um, to rehab the existing police department, um, to make it a facility that suits their needs. Um, and there is a huge difference between the equipment in a fire department and the police department. Thank you. We'll now turn to Mr. Boyer. All right, who wants to talk about back-end parking? Any, any well, I think if you're giving it to everybody, Mr. Genentino is yes. talking about back-end parking. He, he's <laughs> next. Um, but basically, obviously, this has been a big discussion in the past year. Um, the, the change that, that happened with uh, the reconstruction of Genesee Street. Um, so I'd, I'd like to, you know, for you all to comment on a, on a few things. One was um, your, your take on how it was handled as far as the rollout of back-end parking, um, the impact that it has had on downtown Auburn and, and, and visitation to downtown Auburn, and what, if anything, can and should be done going forward. Thank you. Um, this is an issue that has been discussed uh, multiple times during this election multiple times during the previous election and multiple times um, during the reconstruction of Genesee Street. Um, one of the main topics we've spoke about this afternoon is bringing money back to the city of Auburn. Here is another example of us doing that, um, bringing back millions of dollars to reconstruct a state highway that runs through the city of Auburn. Um, when the DOT came in and did an evaluation of Genesee Street, they um, came to the conclusion that the number of accidents were much higher um, in comparison to other communities and they gave us the option of either parallel parking or back in parking. This was not a decision that we made unilaterally or lightheartedly. We partnered with the Downtown Business Improvement District and um, ultimately the decision was to go with back in parking. If we went with parallel parking, we would have lost 40 spots and the bid was not in favor of that. There were multiple public meetings that occurred um, to discuss this. Um, while this was all going on, uh, Mayor Quill, City Manager Jeff Deigert, had a proactive meeting with then Senator State State Senator John D. Francisco, um, who at the time was the second most powerful person in the New York State Senate, and his answer was, deal with it, you'll get used to it, we do it in Syracuse, it works, and that he was not going to go over the head of the DOT. Um, so we moved forward, we had a very public education process um, through the police department, Chief Butler made videos, we distributed them on social media, and as far as whether or not it's affecting downtown or not, I can tell you that I go downtown every single day, I worked downtown and I walked to City Hall often. I was downtown Friday night and Saturday night. I could not find a place to park on Genesee Street, and I parked in the parking garage both times. Um, and again, our sales tax is up. Thank you. Mr. Bouchard, this issue of uh, back-end parking. Uh, the back-end parking has caused some trouble for some of the people that I know um, as far as being, they, they don't feel that it's safe. Um, I feel that the technology of cars has gotten much better with the backup cameras that I don't, feel that the law saying that it was unsafe for us to back out of a spot during you know like during the 80s and the 90s and looking at all the way that it's been forever the cars didn't have backup cameras and today they do so the technology of cars is getting better that we would be able to pull out safely into the road by backing out into it I feel that um, the money that I would have spent to go downtown is not the same I I have decided to go other places than going to places such as Parker's or other places that are downtown because I'd just rather be able to park the way that I want to. So I feel that, that the parking area, uh, the back-end parking is causing some issue and some of the businesses that are downtown are obviously losing some money. Um, but though sales taxes are up, that doesn't mean that downtown sales taxes are up. That just means that the city sales taxes are up. So that could mean Walmart. That could mean anywhere in Auburn. It doesn't mean downtown. There is no, there, there is no measurement of how well downtown's doing as far as downtown only. And so we have to look at that. We cannot just say sales taxes are up and everything's okay. We have to, we have to look at it from what, what are what the voters are saying. And 
everybody I've knocked I've knocked on doors and they've told me that they're that they don't like it. So I'll side with them and see if there's anything that we could do. We could probably do a petition. I'd be okay with that, having a petition at City Hall, Town Cuomo, by sending the petition out to either the DOT or whoever's responsible for it. But I do think that we need to start working with changing it. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Back in parking. So I think um, I think the impact that the negative impact that that we've had has been mostly felt during the winter months. Most of the people that I've talked to, um, as was mentioned, most people have that that the reverse parking uh, cameras in their vehicles, and it has made it easier to uh, to navigate um, the parking. But I think the negative impact comes mostly in the winter time when. Uh, we have so much snow built up, which, of course, there's nothing we can do about snow. There's nothing we can do about the weather. But people have a hard time getting in, into, the, into that spot and then having to walk all the way down to an open area of the sidewalk to walk all the way back with a ticket uh, to put in their, in their windows. Um, and it's mostly the older, older generations that are having a hard time with this, and they're the ones that frequent a lot of those, be those businesses, and, and that's where the problem is. As was mentioned with this and with many other uh, of the topics uh, that, that we've discussed was the lack of, of hearing from the public. We were told this is what we we're going to do, and this is how we're going to do it. Uh, it. The Constitution doesn't allow for that. We don't get to be told what to do by the, by the state. The people get to decide. I've mentioned this in, in one of our other forums. I, I don't know if, we, if there's anything that we can do to, to, to uh, go back to the way that we had it. We may have to live with it the way that it is. But going forward, um, I believe that we need to do a better job of uh, listening to what the people of the city want. Uh, the only, uh, as far as, as the rollout goes, as far as educating the public, I think uh, there was some education of the public, but I don't think we took it far enough. Uh, I drive a car professionally every day for work. I go up and down, uh, go through downtown multiple times a day, and I have had to dodge many accidents, almost involved in many, because people are not using the parking properly. So I think we need to do a better job of education. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Mr. Castro, uh, back in parking. I'm against it. The majority of the city is against it. If elected, it's going to be my, one of my first things to work on to try to get it back the way it was. I've talked to other cities. That could have been negotiated and still got the grant money. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Carbajal on this issue of uh, back-end parking. So change is hard. If I can do it, I think most people can. It took me a while, a couple of tries. I think a lot of people have backup cameras. I offer alternatives in the downtown area if it's not something that you want to do. There's parallel parking on Dill Street, on State Street, on Salt Street. There's pull-in parking at the parking garage, also on, in the Dill Street lot. There's two-hour free parking. So there are other alternatives. I disagree with Mr. Miller. Um, the state can tell us what to do. We have funded mandates and we have unfunded mandates, but yes, they can tell us what to do. So I want to point out that the Genesee Street Reconstruction Project was 1.7 um, miles from South Street to the West City Line. This was completed um, and overhauled the, this, a major city street, including other infrastructure, water, sewer, <laughs> uh, nice egg in infrastructure. The total project cost was 4.6 million dollars, 3.7 of which were federally funded, and half a million dollars came from the state. The city's share was only 7 percent. We did all of that and the city share was only $339,000. So, so that was what the reconstruction of Genesee Street gave to the city, gave to the city of Auburn. So, um, so yeah, I think it's naive to say that the state can't tell us what to do because they can. Mr. Genentino, you have one minute. I would agree with Councillor Carbajal's assessment. I have two New York State vehicle and traffic statues in front of me that, that say the state can tell us how we're going to park in downtown Auburn. So I can share those with Mr. Miller on the way out. Thank you. All right. Before we continue with Mr. Boy, we want to let you know that you're watching the 2019 City Council Forum here at Cuyahoga Community College. It is sponsored by the college and uh, the citizen. Uh, I'm the moderator, Guy Cosentino. The questions are being asked by Jeremy Boyer, the executive editor of The Citizen. We have all five candidates running uh, 
uh, for office uh, this year that you can vote for if you're a city resident on November 5th, or you can start early voting uh, on Saturday the 26th. I'd like to introduce them again just so that you know who is in the studio. This was by lot, uh, Tim LeCastro, who's on the Republican, Conservative, and Independent line, Councilor Dia Carbajal, who's on the Democratic Working Families and Auburn Party, Jimmy Genentino, who's on the Democratic Working Families Party and Auburn Party, Justin Bruchard, who's on the Libertarian Party, and Adam Miller, who's on the Republican, Conservative, and Independent lines. Mr. Boyer. Okay. Um, we'll get into a, a question or two about, about finances, finance and budget, and, and of course taxes. Um, I've never heard anyone in any of these forums actually say I want to raise taxes. Um, so everyone's against taxes and they want to lower them. Um, but the, the real hard part is how do you do that? Um, because you, you do have to, to balance your budget. So for all of you, all, all of you who, who are you know running, especially on a, on a platform of lower taxes, lower fees, um, the question is if you think they're too high, how are you gonna, how are you gonna lower them? Give some specific examples of how you would go about lowering those via the budget. Okay, Mr. Bouchard, you're up first. Okay, um, <clears throat> one of the things that I want to do is I, I feel that the city needs to make cuts, but I don't think that the four people that are sitting at the table and the mayor are the ones that have all the answers as far as where those cuts are supposed to come from. So I want to reward good behavior at the department level. I want each department to be able to, if they save, like let's say they only spend 95% of the budget that they do for the year, I'd like them to be able to keep the 5% for next year in the discretionary spending. That way when, when certain issues come up that are unforeseen later on, they can use that money um, from the discretionary spending from the year before as opposed to injuring the city with more taxes. So there are places in each department that could be cut, but I don't think that the four people sitting at the table have all the answers on where those cuts should come from. I think it should go down to the department level, and I think that they should be able to that, that they know where they could cut, where they could do things differently that would cost more, less money and be more efficient. So i ju just like to see the cuts being done at the department level instead of just promising that we're going to do tax breaks. I would like to just see the cost of the city go down. Thank you, Mr. Bruchard. Mr. Miller. So I think um, the idea of cutting taxes and making it more affordable for people to live is very intricately connected with bringing businesses into the city of Auburn. Uh, I, I think that if we are if we are able to find ways to uh, bring in more industry, more businesses into the city, providing those jobs, we would be able to uh, use that as a way to entice people to come into the city to live here, to 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 shop here, to work here. And then by increasing that tax base, we can then lower the taxes. Uh, I think it, it's, it's very, it, they're very much connected. And I think the way that we incentivize bringing in businesses, uh, I've talked about this before, is using um, renewable energy specifically with the hydroelectric uh, turbines that we have around the city. I think we can very easily um, use those to bring businesses in by saying, hey, you can have free energy if you want on this property. We'll, we could work with them in, in a purchasing price for that property uh, and try to help them out so that they can then provide jobs for our city. And I would also explore the option of zero-based budgeting. I know it, it it's a longer process. It takes a lot more time to go through, but instead of having each department head come in and say, I need this much money, and we just go ahead and give it, we go line by line and see exactly as a, as a whole as a whole body of city government, being able to see where the where we can have a discussion and see where we might be able to cut a, cut some things out here or there, whether it be um, supplies or or maybe we don't need this right now. Maybe we this is a priority, and it goes back to that prioritizing needs and wants. So I think zero based budgeting, uh, increasing the work, uh, the job market, then increasing the workforce. And then we can we can uh, pursue harder the idea of lowering our taxes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Miller. Mr. Castro on the issue of taxes. As I go door to door, that's one of the main issues I hear from all the taxpayers. It's not an easy problem to solve. There's no doubt about it. I mean, you still have to give people in Auburn their services, and you don't want to cut their services. We have to, we got to live within our means, number one. I mean, it's like a household. You can't spend more than you're taking in. Um, somebody's got to be accountable for the spending. 
where if they spend, they got to be accountable for it. And possibly sharing some management services. I mean, it's a it's a hard one to solve, but we got to do something because right now we have a bad combination. We have our population going down and our taxes going up, which that combination together isn't a good one for us. Councilor Carbajal, on the issue of taxes. So sometimes I think that naive would-be politicians kind of overuse that idea of lowering taxes in order to make excuses for when they get in office to, um, so that they can micromanage departments. And that's really um, not a healthy, um, healthy governance. Um, yeah, so, so ways to increase the tax base, right? We want more families to move into Auburn, New York to share the tax base as well as more businesses to move into, um, um, to move into Auburn. Um, CETA is, is working very hard, the Economic Development Agency for Cayuga County, and they are helping businesses to expand and grow. So some of the things that they're doing are, um, we have an increase in, uh, or a, an expansion of courier plastics. Um, we, have, we have money coming in from um, the Red Sea into central New York that will increase businesses. And in booming downtown Auburn, we have a lot of um, restaurants and bars and businesses that are improving our, our, um, our experience here in downtown Auburn. One of the ways to increase business is through arts and culture, through having something to do in Auburn. Um, the museums, the um, businesses that promote the arts. There, um, currently the, the um, live music scene in downtown Auburn is helping that area to, to boom. So again, we're below the 2% two, 2 tax cap. Our sales tax is up. Those are metrics of, of success. Um, our property values are up, and, um, and business is booming in downtown Auburn. That's all going to help us to be able to lower taxes, to bring that, those taxes under control as we move forward. Mr. Gentino. I believe that local government exists to protect the public trust and to provide the essential services that the people of the city of Auburn need. The challenge is to do that within a budget that is affordable for the people who have to pay the taxes. This council has done that. We have worked within a five-year financial plan. We've hired a very competent comptroller who's done a fantastic job. Our city manager has done a great job of negotiating five-year contracts with all of our collective bargaining units um, that allow us to plan um, in accordance with our five-year financial plan. Um, it was made mention by uh, some of my opponents about bringing business to the city of Auburn. Um, anybody who pays attention knows that that's happening. If you look at Technology Park, all of the available property in Technology Park, I believe except for one parcel, has in recent years been purchased. Um, we see a thriving downtown. We see, as Councillor Carbohall mentioned, people coming to Auburn. Um, anytime I go into Prison City Brewery, I don't recognize anybody in there because most of them are from outside the city. People are coming here and they're spending money and that assists our tax base. Um, it is a challenge, um, and one of those challenges is, is dealing with the state and the mandates that come from the state. Um, in 2008, our funding was cut by $500,000. That funding has remained flat. Every year we go to Albany and we advocate to get that money restored. It's a challenge, but it's something that we continue to do, and I'm hopeful that if reelected, um, we will be able to make that happen. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Miller and then Mr. LaCastro, you'll each have a minute. So going door to door and talking to many people, uh, like Mr. LeCastro said, we, we've heard the same thing over and over again, that the taxes keep going up and they don't, and, and people are concerned about this. I've heard, just recently talked to somebody who told me three different elderly couples that they are friends with came home after living in their home for over 50 years. The husband came home and said, we need to leave because we can't afford this place any longer. A, a place where their family has grown out of and to to call an opponent naive of how government works or how taxes work is a direct insult to the voters it's their concern and to tell them that it doesn't matter that's a serious problem mr lacastro going door to door you learn a real lot from people because you're dealing with so many different people the bottom line is it's costing people in auburn more per month to live in auburn and the numbers show it. What I said was the catchphrase, lowering taxes, is used as an excuse by naive politicians 
to micromanage operations of the city, and we've seen it over and over and over again. We have competent staff to help us through the process, and we are um, definitely always fiscally responsible with regard to um, our city taxpayers. Mr. Boyer. Okay. Um, wanted to ask you about, um, you know, one of the, the city council, you know, obviously does a lot of work and they have their, their meetings once a week, but, but really one of the, the key people in city government is the city manager. Um, and uh, um, the, the two councilors, the two incumbent councilors uh, were part of the hiring of a, of a, a city manager during their term, um, Jeff Digert. Um, so I'd like to just hear from all of you. I, I, you probably can remember better than I how many years now. It's about a year and a half or two years that he's in the third year. So just um, talk about how you evaluate his performance as a city manager and um, in the process of selecting him to be the city manager. Mr. Miller, I think you're up first. Sure. Uh, so I think he's doing. A, I think he's doing a great job with the resources that he's been given. Um, I, I remember the. We went for quite a while without um, a city manager because we just we couldn't find anybody that that would take the job. Um, I don't I don't know all the details of of, of why that was, um, but I think Mr. Deiger's doing a fine job. I think he's he's a fine man, and uh, like I said, he's doing the best that he can with what he's given, and I can't blame him. I think things are he's doing he, he he's things are things are going well. All right. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Mr. Lacastro, your thoughts on Mr. Deiger? That's a good question. Um, as I go door to door, and you hear 80% of the people complaining about their taxes, their water rates, their sewer rates, it comes back to the person at the top. I know it's not hard to run a city. Um, you have a lot of people to keep happy. But the bottom line is, people are leaving, and it's costing people more money to live in Auburn. So it starts at the top. Councilor Carberhall on uh, Mr. Diger. I think that one of the most important things that any governing body can do is to hire the chief executive. So that chief executive has got to reflect the priorities of the city council and move in a manner that, that is, is within those priorities. Also, um, the city manager will have control over the culture and the feel of the working environment for so many of our city employees, which is also very important. He is effectively, um, um, he has had effective relationships with city labor. All of our contracts have been negotiated on time and that with um, in a fair in a fair manner to both the taxpayer and to and to the um, collective bargaining units. So he's also made several key um, um, hires, right? So he's hired a new police chief. Um, who has changed the culture of the police department and our fire chief. He has hired a new director of municipal utilities um, as well as we have new, um, a new corporation council. So the city is, uh, and assistant corporation council. Those key hires are very important for, for the city. The city council really has only one employee and that is the city manager. And then the city manager keeps, carries, like I said, the priorities of, of the city council down into the day-to-day -day operations of the city. I think that many changes um, we've had so many good changes here in the city with regard to um, to his management. I'm very pleased with um, with our hire of Jeff Diger. Jeff Diger also came out of the fire department, and he was the the um, the fire chief. And leadership in that kind of environment um, uh, fosters leadership skills that I don't believe that other people um, necessarily necessarily have so so in emergency services you need to make a decision and you need to carry that decision out with the best resources possible so so he's been an, an effective leader 